All right, folks, welcome to Collaborative Annotating Part 3. The first two parts really focused on Google Docs and, and the ways that you, the little tips and, and tactics you might use to uh, fully use Google Docs as a place to do collaborative annotating with your class. This session, we're going to actually take a look at Jamboards and what you might do with them, how you might use them, and what are some of the features that allow Jamboards to be really a cool place to do uh, fun things with annotating. All right, so the first thing you want to do is actually go to uh, the Jamboard site, and that is right up here at the top, http colon forward slash forward slash jamboard.google.com. Once you go there, if you have created or share, had any Jamboard shared with you, they will show up here. So as you can see, I already have a few up here that I've been working on. And if you don't, that's perfectly fine too. Over here in the right hand corner is a giant plus sign with a circle. And if you click on that, it's going to create your first Jamboard. Now, once you're in here, a couple things just to note, you have uh, several different things. Some things we'll dive into a little bit more and other things we won't talk about too much. Uh, you have the share feature up here. I've talked about that in a previous video around uh, Google Docs and it's often very similar logic and, and rules apply. Um, so we covered that in the first video in this series. So you can go take a look at that. And then over on the left, you have a couple different features. Uh, you have the pen. This is if you want to draw or write something. You have the eraser. This is obviously if you want to erase something. Uh, right now, the cursor is selected. And so this would allow you to pick up to point, click, drag, drop. Uh, we have the sticky note, which we'll talk about. Uh, inserting images is what we'll talk about, inserting shapes we'll talk about, inserting text. Uh, we won't get to, but if you just want to put some text on the screen, you can click on that, click somewhere on the screen, and uh, you will then be able to write as you please. Uh, a couple other things to note, you have the uh, undo button. So if you make a mistake and you want to undo it, you can undo it. You have the redo button. If you do something and you actually want to do it again, you can hit that again. Finally, you have the magnifying glass. And so this is obviously useful if you want to kind of zoom in on something and do a little more work. Uh, you can set the background. So if you want something different, and we'll take a look at this next, um, you can change that background. And then clear frame. Say you've done a lot of work. It's, you know, it, it's, it's looking messy or you want to just reset. You just hit clear frame. Uh, we'll also talk about this up here where you will, can have uh, your first Jamboard and then you can have second, tertiary, and many other sub pages on your Jamboard. All right, so first thing I did was I actually renamed this as class discussion, and I did that by coming up to the title. I click on it, it becomes editable, and therefore I change the name. Uh, one other tool that's obvious here is this little uh, highlighter or this little laser pointer. Uh, and when I use this and I can kind of uh, focus in on something, it it shows up, in other words, I can circle something and it shows up, but it disappears shortly thereafter. So it's very much like the laser pointer we use uh, or that has been used in, in classes and the like. Really the point would be is if you were presenting something and you wanna draw people's attention, the laser point would be a great way of doing that, kind of circling something to draw in that attention. All right, so we're gonna set the background. Now, when I click on set background, it gives me a couple different options. I can create the page to have dots and uh, lines, squares, graph paper. I can have it uh, blue or black, or I can change it to an image. So if I chose, say, the lined paper, this is what it would look like. Uh, so depending on what you're doing, this might be a fun thing to do. You know, you might try to play around with this in some, some capacity. But if I wanted a background, if I wanted students to discuss an image, and this is where I think Jamboard is really cool, is being able to play with images uh, or being able to create commentary and have students annotate around images, uh, I'm going to select image and it's going to pop up this little screen here. And I really like the screen here because there's several different places I can really do some fun stuff. Uh, the first thing I can do is jump over to Google image search and I can put in a search for images through Google image search. Uh, in this case, I put in Fannie Lou Hamer and these are the images and I could keep scrolling down and find many, many different images that I could click on and pull in. 
I can also include any images that I might have in my Google Drive. So if I uploaded a bunch of uh, photos, then they might be here. If I used Google Photos and have a bunch of them archived there, I can pull them in there. If I'm on a mobile device of some sort or even on my computer and I want to activate the camera, I can do that. If I have the URL address of an image, I can pull that in, uh, but I'm going to upload. So I clicked on upload again, it brings me into my computer and I can click around to different places to find the folder where the image is that I want. In this case, I want American progress. So I'd click on that and then I'd hit open and it would show up and it would be the background. And this is one thing to note between this image tool right here and creating an image as a background is once it's a background, you can't move it or manipulate the image itself. You can annotate on it, but you can't move it. So if I were to put in an image over here on the left side and put it in here, I could move it about, I could change its angle, I could kind of play around with it. But right now, what I would, what I'm using this for, how I think about using this is I don't want them to necessarily be able to move the image around. That's, that's going to cause some confusion. What I, so I want it as a background and then everything else that the students are going to do is more foreground. So in this case, I like to use this, this one because there's so much to talk about in this and, and I teach courses in literature and in history and there, there's a lot of, of commentary going on here that that lays into, you know, a lot of problems around manifest destiny, colonial, uh, uh, settler colonial mindset and the like. So I might have students start to kind of challenge or ask, you know, what do we see going on here? But it can really be any image that you think might be useful. It can be signs, it can be advertisements. Those are always fun to pick apart depending on your, what your course is and the like. All right, so once we have the image set up, the next is what do we do with it? So we're gonna, as I said, I might, you know, make use of the pen icon here. And here again, it gives you some options. They're pretty straightforward uh, options. You have the pen, which is more like a small short, is a smaller uh, fine line. You have the marker, which would be a little bit thicker, the highlighter, which would be a little bit translucent and the paintbrush, which would not be as, as sturdy or might have a little bit more flourish to it. Now you have the choice of what kind of pen and then what color. This is one place where, where jam boards are a little bit limited in that it doesn't give you a full range of colors, but you honestly don't need them and more colors can often just create more distraction or more choice paralysis. So you might choose your pen, choose your color, and then actually go in and circle something. So in this case, I circled the book that um, Columbia, that's the, the name of the woman in this, this painting is, is, uh, is holding. So in terms of annotating or using this as a demonstration, I might tell a student to, you know, both circle something and then write something about it. Now, this is where I might use writing sticky notes. And so to use sticky notes, I clicked on this little button on the left-hand side here. And again, it gives me a couple options of color, right? I have yellow, green, blue, uh, pink, orange, and transparent. And it gives me the option to write in the text here. So I would write in the text. Once I do that, I would hit save and it would pop up in the left-hand corner. At this point, I can actually move this around. So if I wanted to, I could have moved it right here um, next to the circle. I just didn't want to necessarily block up the painting. So then there's other things I can do. So if you notice when I drew the circle, I did this with a pen and it was, you know, it's, I'm not the great at drawing circles with, with a mouse. So I might just want to use a circle tool. And in this case, I chose, um, I came over here and I chose circle, but there were other shapes I could have used. And then I circled an area. Now this time what I did was up here, when I use shapes, I actually have the choice of what color do I want the outline of it to be? And then what color do I want the, the inside of it? So I might've wanted to put a golden circle uh, or I didn't want to put a golden circle. So I made sure I had the outline as um, this yellowish golden circle, but the inside I made uh, among my color choices, I chose transparent, uh, which we just saw on the, the screen before. That way you could really see where I was focusing on. And then I added um, 
you know, a few more annotations just to give you a sense of, you know, how this could really get marked up pretty well um, and really serve as a good starting point for conversation or continued conversation of what happened after class and what happened in class or what happens in, you know, what you do in class carries on after class. So this is one way of doing it. It's great. It works really well. But if you wanted to uh, actually, or as you can see, it's actually getting a little bit crowded here. So all you need is three or four more comments, and it's going to get, you know, really hard to figure out whose comment is whose. So you might actually want to duplicate this. And if you want to duplicate this and therefore have each student, each student or groups of students annotate, um, copies of these. It's actually really easy to do. You would come up here to this scene screen right here and you'd click that little triangle, right? And that little triangle would allow you to expand the bar frame. And once you expand the bar frame, this is the screen you are faced with. And what, what this tells you is you can put a slide before it, you could put a slide after it. Um, up here, you could um, also have some options to play around. So when I click on that, those three little dots has asked me, do I want to duplicate or do I want to delete? Since there's only one slide right now, I can't delete anything, but I can duplicate it. So maybe I want to make several copies of this and then assign students, you know, you look at copy one, you look at copy two. All right, so I've made my copy. The only problem is it copied everything on this first one, including all the comments. So I kind of got a little ahead of myself. That's okay. I can just go into the second copy and I can clear frame. And once I clear frame, it cleared all of those extra comments. Um, but since this is a background image, it didn't get cleared. Um, so now at this point, if I wanted to, if I wanted, you know, each student to work on a single frame themselves, uh, then I would just go up and make copies of this for them to uh, take advantage of. So that's how you use it. Now, how that, that is that is the the what of it, like how you might be able to do things with it. Here are some of the ways you might want to work with it uh, or think about how to use it. So one is you know a collect collectively annotating around one image. This is exactly what I was just showing where people all go in, you look at one image and you all just start to add commentary. Uh, then you might also, as I started to say towards the end, each page in the Jamboard is somebody's page to annotate. So you take that same image and you replicate it as many students as you have and let them go in and, and annotate one. And you can also use that text feature to say, you know, this is this, is this student's page, this is this student's page, this is this student's page. You could also use that same slide deck or you could use that same jam or you could use a jam board to uh, provide different images. So maybe you find five, 10, 15 images that you think are really striking and put a new image on each page and allow students to go in and engage with different images. Maybe it's one student per page or maybe they just go through and have to provide commentary on at least two or three pages. Uh, you can also, you know, and this is something I, I, you can create a collage around course themes. And maybe you do this by week or you do this by unit where, you know, you spend time having students gather images and quotes and things like that to create this visual representation uh, of what you have been doing or thinking about in the, the past week or a few weeks. I also like this idea of you insert an uh, image of a, a person or a place and have students bring in relevant quotes uh, and information or ideas about that person. And I think about this, uh, you know, I think there's some really fun ways you could, if there's somebody you're exploring within your course, or if there's an idea that you really want them to be thinking about, uh, really have them create that, that really fascinating collage, that, that mixture of, of materials. And then finally, you know, this is one that I really like, which is the gallery walk where actually, you know, students create a page or create a jam board or a page on a jam board. And you go around class with each of them explaining what they did in that jam board and explain the use of the images, the relationships of, you know, image and text and why they thought that was, you know, 
what they were trying to achieve with that Jamboard. So those are my recommendations. Uh, I think Jamboards as a tool are really fun, really exciting, um, and really easy to use, which is always a big thing for me is, is that level of, you don't need to know a lot in order to get in to start to play with it. You're not going to break it. You know, there's the, the undo button that's there constantly to kind of save you from uh, making too many mistakes and all of that. Um, so I really encourage you to take a look at this. If you are using it, I'd love to hear the ways that you're using it. And if you have additional questions or if you want to play around with it or learn more about this or other tools that we've looked at in these series, please don't hesitate to reach out to me um, and share or ask questions. All right. Thank you all very much. Have a great day.